Welcome back, collectors, and thank you so much for taking your time to tune into Diecast Emporium. Today, I kind of have a very special and different video for you. We are going to be reviewing some models on this channel, but we're going to go about it in somewhat of a different method. We're going to be reviewing Diecast Master's entire lineup of 125 scale Caterpillar forklifts. Of course, Cat calls them something different. Specifically, they call them lift trucks. So, starting on the left, we have the Cat P5000 lift truck. In the middle, we have the Cat DP25N lift truck. And on the far right, get ready for this one, this is a mouthful. We have the Cat EP16C in parentheses, N parentheses, PNY lift truck. Good lord. Anyway, uh, the item number for the Cat P5000 is 85223. Item number for the DP25N is 85256. And the item number for the, you need a breath and a half to pronounce it, we're just going to call it the 16 for sake of this video, is 85504, which is a much newer model. So all of them, and you guys are going to love this, all of them, despite being core classics, has the ability to completely remove our friend Bob, the operator, from the operator seat, which is an absolutely wonderful thing for core classic series models. All right, so let's go ahead and start with the P5000 lift truck. Here is the packaging for it. Kind of move these out of the way here. We'll get to them in due time. So there is the packaging for the P5000 lift truck. Already went over the important information again, 125 scale. There's a picture of it hard at work. And the P5000... Uh, at least of these three, anyway, is the only one with the tank on the back of it, as you can see there, and you'll see it in just a second on the model. And there's the specs, if you want to pause the video and check those out, by all means, please do that now. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the forklift itself. There he is. So, again, I mentioned that this is the only one that has the tank on it, which is right there. On the back, you have cat and he had these straps which are not really straps they're kind of molded into the casting and then painted to give it the illusion that they are straps but it still does a job and looks great here's your decals up on top of the ROPS or the rollover protection structure which is all in metal and not plastic which you can probably hear that that's metal the tires themselves or the hubs have a really spectacular um detail level done to them they resemble the real one very very well so i mentioned that our operator friend is removable in fact in the packaging itself he is actually not in the seat you actually have to put him in it yourself so he is easy enough to take out just make sure you don't get his arms in the steering wheel column there you go and that allows us to get a somewhat better view of the interior. You see the steering wheel there, some foot pedals, and there are three uh, levers or joysticks right here, which I presume probably operate this. I know absolutely nothing about forklifts in the real world. I was never really around them growing up. So I am by no means an expert on forklifts or lift trucks, as Caterpillar calls them. Cat often has their own names for things, you know, they do that kind of thing. Bulldozers, for example, are track-type tractors and whatever. Forklifts are lift trucks, but I digress. So, the forklift mechanism is the same for the most part, for better or for worse, on all three of these. But that's a good thing, because it has a few different stages on it, and it goes forward and backward, and if you look here, the actual forks can slide in or out depending on what size pallet you have so that gives you some added flexibility for poses and the forks themselves are made of metal and not plastic which you often see so again a nice touch and it will go all the way to the ground just like that backwards forwards so really any pose that you would really want to replicate with a real forklift you can do uh, an interesting tidbit about this one, again, no expert on real forklifts, but this forklift doesn't give you any idea of uh, what it is. It's kind of an undercover forklift. What I mean by that is there's no uh, indication anywhere on it that this is a P5000. So this is our incognito cat forklift. All right, let's move on. 
Next, we have the Cat DP25N lift truck. This is item number 85256. On the back, uh, another picture of a guy being productive, which is far from what most of us are doing, at least that we're quarantined and working from home. Uh, there's the description of the real machine. All right, let's take a look at it. So this one does give you an idea of what it is. It's not trying to be something that it isn't. Right there on the door, Cat 25. Uh, no propane tank right here, obviously. And no joysticks up here either, which is, again, have no idea if there's no joysticks on the real 25. Maybe it's all operated with foot pedals. Maybe it's all up here. I don't know. Know nothing about forklifts. That's why I review models, not the real thing. Um, and yes, you have the same pallets that slide forward and backwards, left to right, I should say. And again, you have the same three or four stage elevating mechanism on the forklift. So ex exact same thing. Uh, if I didn't point it out, I surely meant to. Both the 5000 and the 25 have working steering that you can set left or right. And it's actually variable and notched. So if I shut up for three seconds, you can see and listen that every time you set it, it clicks in so that it locks at a certain steering angle, which... Personally speaking, that's my preferred way that steering should be modeled on most models. That way it's not floppy or loose. Because that click or lock tells you that it's, well, locked at a certain angle. So, um, again, you can achieve those really, really sharp angles that you want to see that forklifts often have to make when they're maneuvering ar around warehouses and tight corners. So, good to see there. Okay, so for the most part, that is the Cat 25, very similar to the 5000. You put the two facing each other. There's the size differential between the two. To my eye, they're roughly about the same size. Uh, the 5000 might be a little bit bigger, but that could also be an optical illusion. Um, they're roughly about the same size. Here's a head-on view. Okay, and the last one that we will take a look at. This is uh, definitely the most, uh, yeah, we'll go with the word unique. That's a good way to describe it. Let me take a breath here. You ready? All right, this is the Diecast Masters Core Classic Series Caterpillar EP16 parentheses C and parentheses PNY lift truck. Item number is 85504. We'll call it the Cat 16. On the back, there it is, working, which is more than what I'm doing right now. Not that that's bothering me or anything. And there's your machine dimensions and operation specifications. There you go. Nice Core Classic Series packaging. I like it. I really do. Some people, this came up recently on my channel, um, and I... I respect all of you guys' opinion, and thank you so much for commenting and contributing, whatever it may be, on my channel. Um, there was a gentleman that uh, contributes frequently to the channel. I can't thank him enough for doing that. Um, but he was mentioning that he's not a fan of these Core Classic Series packaging. And um, I respectfully disagree with him. And that's because, you know, you have the Diecast Masters Highline Series that come in the tins, but you also are paying extra for that style packaging. The Core Classic series, the whole reason for that line of product is you still get Diecast Masters quality product, but the price is a little bit more affordable. And one of the ways that they save a little bit is by offering this style of older, reminiscent packaging that we've seen with the Norscott and the Tonkin days. And uh, honestly, it doesn't bother me. It does the same job of getting the model safely to you in your hands. And if we can cut corners, especially in this day and age with everything going on when for most of us, models are um, not the top thing on our list. Um, I'm all for it. So that's my two cents. Now, the Cat 16. So this is unique 
in that it has the steering axle or the steering wheels back here. They're kind of hidden. They're underneath the back of the lift truck, forklift, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but you can still set them, and they have an interesting tread pattern on them that I like. But it allows you to kind of, you know, the way that they with their set, it almost gives you the indication that you can probably really irritate your manager or boss and probably take this thing out for some donuts, in theory. Don't know, but possibly, the way that the rear steer works. Not that you'd, of course, want to do that if you want to, you know, maintain any sort of employment. Uh, but it's interesting the way that this is set up. And again, same functionality on this. Not going to spend too much time on it. This video is already over 10 minutes. Uh, but as with all of these, you can move... Bob, the operator figure, in and out of the cab, whichever suits your needs. And these forklifts are very, very popular, not only, not only amongst us model collectors, but also the, I think it's called G-Scale uh, model railroaders, the, the huge trains. Uh, these look great on those layouts, whether they're working in uh, loading flat cars or working in warehouses, if it's a big layout. You often see these models, and uh, they look right at home there. So that is a review of the entire Diecast Masters Core Classic Series Cat Forklift or lift, tr lift Truck lineup in 1 to 25 scale. So they are a little bit bigger machines, but I'm all for it. It allows a lot of casting to stay out, to stand out and give us a good view of the interior of these machines. So you guys let me know what you think down in the comment section. As always, I'm Tommy with Diecast Emporium. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you in the next video.